I declare the post-election meeting of the 2024 Sunshine Coast Council open. Welcome to councillors, officers, those that join us in the gallery, and those joining us on the live stream on this auspicious occasion. Can I please ask everyone to stand as we welcome Auntie Helena Goulash, Kabi Kabi Corporation Director, to deliver the welcome to country. Thank you, everyone. Please feel comfortable to sit back down. Thank you. Oh, they're going to stand? Oh, okay. Nara! Nara. Hello, everyone. I feel privileged and humbled to represent Cubby Cubby Peoples here today. I am a member of our corporation, the Cubby Cubby First Nations Peoples Aboriginal Corporation, and I am representing that group today. Um, the larger group of Cubby Cubby Gubby Gubby Peoples have selected the seven directors there's myself, Norman Bond, Brian Warner, Mick Douglas, Cecilia Combo, Kerry Jones, Melissa Bond, and myself. We're also the cultural her heritage body for Cubby Cubby Gubby Gubby Peoples. I would like to honour our ancestors, the original peoples, who lived and worked and cared for this beautiful region that's now called the Sunshine Coast region. Our peoples took their responsibilities very seriously in terms of caring for our country. And it has, it has been a pleasure to work with Council particularly over recent years, in partnership to, as, as partners, both meet our obligations to look after this country, the land, the waters that flow into the ocean, and ensure that we are leaving a legacy for future generations that we all can be proud of. We are working in partnership with Council in terms of the biosphere, the Blue Heart, and also with particular sections within Council that have a strong focus on the, the cultural heritage side. Uh, so with um, the environment management team, there's been a lot of good work done there. I think we're very excited about the work that we've been doing in relation to the planning scheme. And I would like to commend counts, this council for the forward thinking approach that has been adopted. The planning scheme is very important to us because there has, there has been a need for a lot more improvement in terms of ensuring that Cubby Cubby peoples as the original scientists, as the original ecologists, the marine biologists, every, every science you can name that involved caring for, looking after the country, our peoples were the original peoples doing that for tens of thousands of years. So we are excited about the process we've entered into with council where we're ensuring that Cubby Cubby peoples and the role that we have played and more importantly, 
the value that we bring to the table, can bring to the table now, today, in terms of us moving forward. We're excited about that work and we're, we're reaching a point um, where hopefully everyone will be able to see um, the product of quite a bit of that work. Moving forward, we, we are very pleased about the partnerships with, we'd, we've forged. We do have a lot of our dreams, our longer term visions that are yet to be realised and we look forward to sharing those much more with councils, councillors and of course with the new mayor. I haven't said congratulations now, but I have to the new mayor and to some of the new members um, and wishing, wishing everyone well. We do know that Cubby Cubby Country, this Sunshine Coast region, has had a lot of development and is, um, there's a lot more planned for the future. So we are looking forward to being able to sit down with with hopefully with the mayor and with councillors and talk more about how we can take everything to even an, another level in terms of our partnerships moving forward in the near and, um, and medium and longer term future. Because we know that everything that we love about this country, everything that visitors love, needs to be preserved for future generations. So from our perspective, we feel we have a lot that we can contribute, add value to the work that's being done in terms of a lot of the older knowledge, the older approaches that Cubby Cubby peoples incorporated into their daily lives in terms of sustainability and um, it may seem as though it was a long time ago, but certainly some of those old, some of that old knowledge and those old practices are being incorporated more and more into um, cultural heritage management within Australia and also being acknowledged more, I think, more strongly overseas in terms of Indigenous peoples worldwide. So we, we are looking forward to that. Um, and I, in my professional life, my passion is the arts cultural space. Our, our corporation and Cubby Cubby Peoples obviously have a strong interest in the arts cultural area as well. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the focus on arts is about cultural art in terms of the connection to our cultural, um, our cultural knowledge and cultural practices. Um, so it's not all about archaeology, it is about um, the intangible, the song lines, the story lines in terms of how everything connects up across our country and how looking after one part of country will be important in terms of other parts further further north, east, west or south. So we, we look forward to having much more discussion. We are very keen to get our rangers on board, which we've been working on for quite a while. We're very keen to um, establish more bases across our country. It's a large land estate, as you know, and the Sunshine Coast Council region is one council region. We have... Um, so Moreton Bay, Noosa, uh, if Fraser Coast, um, also Gympie. I think I've probably left out somewhere, someone there, might be the Burnett. So moving forward, we just hope that we will be able to share a lot more ideas and aspirations with you and we look forward to that. So wish you all very well with um, your new your roles, the new council. I know it's a big job and it is very hard to keep everyone happy, hard, impossible. But I hope that 
we will be able to come together in terms of achieving more of a balance in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Auntie Helena. Would you please remain standing? Father Francis is unable to join us this morning. Councillor Hungerford, would you please lead us in the prayer? Let's pray. Lord, we ask you to preside over our meeting and our labours and to bless all our endeavours. Help us to build a community united in harmony of love and service. Watch over our families at home, at work and at school. We thank you, Lord, for everything that widens our knowledge and equips us more fully for the task of life and living. Give us the knowledge and prudence which will enable us to make the decisions for the good of our community. Open our minds to the task at hand. Open our ears to each other. Open our hearts to your will. Teach us to know our own strengths that we may use to the full, the gifts and talents which you have given us. We make this prayer in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councillor Hungerford. Please be seated. Councillors, we now move to item three of the agenda. I note that all councillors are present here this morning. Item four, councillors, I remind you of the requirements of the Local Government Act 2009, which sets out how councillors' conflicts of interest are managed in local government matters. These requirements apply to how we deal with such matters at this meeting. Councillors, now moving to item five of the agenda, presentations. Councillors, I would like to begin these proceedings taking the opportunity to present. Imagine a 10-year-old boy who's bright. In fact, he's so clever that his year three teacher walks the five kilometres to his family home to convince his parents that Enrico should stay at school, that he has potential. But despite these efforts, his parents say he must leave school and work the fields like his older brothers. They can't afford the luxury of an education. Enrico would grow up, leave his home in Italy, take a wife, Delfina, and set sail for more than 30 days to Australia in search of a better life for their future children. They cut sugarcane in Bundaberg, grew tobacco, and grew crops, all the while reminding their three children that here, in this country, anything is possible. That you can make your own opportunities, that hard work actually gets you places, that it is okay to dare to dream. It probably doesn't surprise you to know that Enrico and Delfina were my parents. Fast forward to 2024, and here I stand before you as mayor of the Sunshine Coast. I'm passionate, determined, hardworking and strong, and I fight for what I believe in. It's eight days since we were sworn in, Congratulations to my fellow councillors. And what a whirlwind it has been. Briefings, meeting, late night emails, early morning interviews, and I can honestly say I have loved every minute. 
I know, as they say, it's early days. But I've been imagining this for some time. And I am just so proud to be here today as your mayor. Of course, I didn't get here alone. I have a wonderful family who have stood behind me, encouraging me, supporting me, and even handing out how to vote cards for me. To them, I say the biggest thank you. To my husband, Joe, for your unwavering support, now and always. Thanks must also go to my committee, a group of warrior women who helped me enact all my plans, my fundraisers, my supporters, and let's not forget the team of dozens and dozens of volunteers who, on election day, stood at the polls in my name. They believed in me, and I thank you all. This is a new chapter in my career. Until now, I've been a journalist for Seven News for 29 years, and a lecturer, researcher, and academic at the University of the Sunshine Coast for 24 years. I'm the patron and ambassador of a number of organisations, the Cindy McKenzie Breast Cancer Program, Sunshine Troop, and Roofs to Recovery, just to name a few. I've been entrenched in the community for more than three decades, and it's an enormous privilege to serve. During the election campaign, I promised I would bring a fresh, new style of leadership, to work with my councillor colleagues and our state and federal members to secure the infrastructure the Sunshine Coast so desperately needs. I developed a 10-point plan. I promised to be open and accountable, available, accessible. Most of all, I promised to listen. This is an exciting time in our region's story. We are facing enormous growth, which brings challenges, but also tremendous opportunities. The chance to make the Sunshine Coast a better place for us all and for future generations. These are the pledges I make to you today. I will work every day to represent our community. I will always do my best to serve you and put the people of the Sunshine Coast first. I look forward to working with council officers, executive, and my fellow councillors to make this a reality. Today, if they were alive, I think Enrico and Delfina would be proud. And I promise to do my utmost to make each of you proud too. Thank you. I would now like to invite Councillor Broderick to address the meeting. Councillor Broderick, you now have the floor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good morning, fellow councillors, staff, family and friends. It is a privilege to be standing here today as the Division One councillor for our Sunshine Coast. My husband, Mark, and I have been part of our Sunshine Coast community here for over 20 years. Our family have been born and raised here. It's no secret that we love where we live. Family, business, community, and everything in between. It's been quite the journey, but there is no question that I genuinely believe that everything that I have done up until this point has led me to where we are today. As a new councillor, as our Mayor has said, it's been quite the whirlwind of learning this week. A journey I have thoroughly enjoyed. I'd like to thank all of the executive and support staff for their guidance with us newbies this week. Um, seeking to make our transition to the world of council a seamless and even enjoyable process, so thank you. Over the last week, our councillors have had the opportunity to meet regularly uh, together to discuss the events of the day, process information and spend time getting to know each other and our priorities for our region. This has been an exercise that I've valued immensely. This process is creating a culture of trust, 
connection and is particularly important for our community um, as they can be confident, as I am, that their council is striving to work together for the best outcomes for our region. We have a diverse and a strong team, all of who are passionate about representing our communities and a desire to see our Sunshine Coast thrive. Division One is very diverse, from our magnificent nationally heritage listed Glasshouse Mountains to the stunning Pumice Stone Passage. We're a community of communities surrounded by natural beauty, an area we need to preserve, protect and care for the best we can. Like many areas of our Sunshine Coast, Division One continues to grow at a rapid rate. This presents us with both challenges and opportunities in the years ahead. I look forward to taking this journey with you, our community, as we seek to see our region thrive while sustaining all the things that are important to us. I will not shy away from the tough issues, but will turn up, work hard, and then be there to celebrate the successes with you. I ran a campaign on building connections, and I look forward to doing just that. Listening to and understanding what our communities need and acting on it. I am committed to being that representative who is transparent, accountable and genuinely authentic. This is who I am. I will always consider representing and serving our region to be an honour and a privilege that I'll never take for granted. All of the councillors in the room would acknowledge that none of us get here on our own. I wouldn't be here today without the incredible support of family, friends and community. A special thank you to my husband, Mark, who works tirelessly for our family, our children, Jake, Mitch, Claire and Lockie, also for their unwavering support, and to my mum and dad. If you want to win an election, I would recommend that you put your mum at the polls. <laughs> no one else can talk about you like they can. And a special thank you to my incredible friends and supporters. Without them, I wouldn't be here. It was very much an all-in Team Jenny effort. Congratulations also to our other candidates who ran the race with us. Campaigning means significant sacrifice, which you're all very aware of. And those candidates should be acknowledged for their willingness to put up their hand and represent our communities as well. So thank you. You have my commitment that I will be dedicated, work hard and authentically and humbly represent and serve our region to the best of my ability. I am passionate about seeing our community thrive and thank you for the trust you've placed in me. This is not a role I take lightly, but where I'm committed to represent Division One and the Greater Sunshine Coast in the best way possible and I look forward to taking this journey with you. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. Thank you, Councillor Broderick. Councillor Landsberg, I now invite you to address the meeting. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge my fellow councillors and also congratulate Madam Mayor on um, being elected. Uh, I'd also like to uh, thank the support that I received during the campaign, especially from my family, my friends and supporters, and as well as the support that I received from all levels of government. It's a vote of confidence from our community to see that all councillors that actually stood for re-election were returned. And that's an important signal to send about the past decisions that this council has made. I'd also like to thank our media management, ELT uh, team, our support staff as well, and please pass on my appreciation for the services that you deliver for our community. Our region continues to grow at a faster rate than most regions across Australia. And in my previous term, I thoroughly enjoyed my role as representing the portfolio of, of economic development. Having a region that grows and prospers, our policy document, the Regional Economic Development Strategy, is recognised for its outstanding work in meeting and surpassing key targets and investment opportunities for our region. And as a result, we have now one of the strongest regional economies in Australia. But within my role as Division Two Councillor, it's also been a privilege to represent not only constituents of Caloundra, but also the many groups focused on promoting the Southern Gateway to our Sunshine Coast. A special mention should go to the Caloundra Chamber of Commerce, the Caloundra Business Alliance, the Caloundra Downtown Task Force Group, and especially for their work behind the scenes 
in the success of Caloundra of being named the top tourism town. As a priority for myself in this term, we will still need to deliver on important infrastructure projects for Caloundra. And this is really centred around the Caloundra Transport Corridor upgrade, the revitalisation of the city centre as per the 2017 Caloundra Master Plan, our place activation group about revitalising our business centre, and also the recently endorsed business case for the Caloundra Regional Art Gallery. As well as we've seen in Caloundra significant environmental impacts of the Bribey Island breakthrough and the effects to local stormwater outlets and drainage along our foreshore areas of Golden Beach, and as well as the together with the collapse of the Moffat Beach seawall. Council will continue uh, with its process of the coastal pathway along the Kings Beach headland section, which is currently under construction, and as well as another priority for myself is the important connection between Moffat Beach and the Kura Street uh, connection of the coastal pathway at Dickey Beach. And as well as for myself, this term I'll be committed to getting out to my community and educating our ratepayers and trying to get across for our community to understand what our responsibilities and services that this council deliver. And as well as during budget discussions, I'm sure issues that came up during my election was vouchers for free waste um, tip fees, which has always continually been raised, and I'm sure this will be an important discussion. And last but not least, I just want to finish on community awareness that was raised during the um, Australia Day Awards. I look forward to those coming back to Council for a full decision. And I'm committed to representing Caloundra and also making decisions in the broader region that will benefit our whole Sunshine Coast. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Landsberg. I now invite Councillor Burns to address the meeting. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Thanks, everyone. And just uh, want to pay my acknowledgement to our First Nations people, Cubby Cubby people of the Southern Coastal Plains and the Dinabara people of the Southern Highlands. Just really deeply respect and honour their ongoing custodianship to this land. We live in a Kraken place and it's uh, largely due to a millennia of care and custodianship. And I think it's really great to honour that. I also want to, I guess, acknowledge a whole lot of people and say thank you because you stand here today and I feel really grateful. It's been a bit of a weird old space and it's a kind of a crazy thing to do when you run a campaign to get elected to any level of government. It's not something I'd ever aspired to previously. And so when the decision was made, I kind of decided to jump full into it. But I do want to just say, firstly, thank you to the people of Division 3 for those that uh, chose to, I guess, vote for me. Thank you. It's um, a deep honour. It's a deep privilege. And I, I, um, I'm really humbled by that, but deeply respectful, too, of your trust and faith in me. I want to say thanks to my family and my friends, too, the colleagues here of Sunshine Coast Council, too, the, for the support and, uh, I guess, the excitement with which you've greeted me as a councillor. Uh, it is an odd thing to sit on this side of the fence, so to speak, after having worked here for the last four years in the role of a team lead for the community development space. But I'm really humbled and grateful that you see me as someone who's willing to represent and support the really great work that we do as an organisation. I do want to actually acknowledge my family too. I think, Jenny, you're right. Like, if you're going to actually have someone campaign for you, your mum or your mother-in-law are pretty bang on. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'd let my mum do it again. Uh, she, she probably went a little bit hard in some parts with some people, um, but she was definitely passionate for me. Um, for the, my mates and people who kind of came out of the woodwork and said, yeah, we're going to wear your shirt, Tim, and we want to actually honour you. Thank you. Uh, to my family, I've got two kids, Hope and Abe. Um, appreciate you not actually freaking out too much and actually going, yeah, we're in it for the twists and turns that it might bring, for encouraging... Um, your friends to vote for me because they're all of voting age now. Um, for those, you know, maybe like Ollie who thought he could but he's only 16, maybe next time, mate. Um, but also, I just wanted to say thank you to my daughter, Hope, specifically. She's living in London, so she couldn't be here, but thanks for looking after me from afar. And to Abe, just clean your room. Um, <laughs> that would be helpful. I do just want to say thanks to Mandy, my wife as well, particularly. Uh, she's got good taste in men. Um, 
but also you're a passionate woman, you're clever, uh, you're really wise and you're really dedicated and you, you pounded the pavement with me in 30 plus degree heat on a number of occasions and that's a deep sacrifice that I'm grateful for. I'm standing here today, I'm actually wearing some socks that were given to me by residents and friends at a social affordable housing complex I worked in a number of years ago. And these people gave me these socks and I'm wearing them to really remind me that um, you represent people in a role of counsellor. It's to stay grounded and not to actually get too far ahead of yourself. But actually often we ignore the voices of people who live on the margins or have had uh, a challenging or varied kind of life experience. But for mine, these socks kind of represent the people that I'm here to serve. Uh, and it also highlights, I guess, something that is true about me, because I know for many of you who know me well, have been surprised and somewhat shocked even, and probably relieved in some cases at how I'm dressed this morning. <laughs> uh, it's not my standard attire, and it's certainly not conventional attire for Tim Burns. But it is actually representative of one thing, and that is I actually firmly believe that all people matter. It's, this, is, this is today is not actually about me. It's about us. It's about our community, it's about Division 3, it's about the sunny coast, but it's actually about us as a council. And my, my commitment is to actually respect and honour people. And actually, it's even to respect and honour conventions, even if I don't agree with them, for the sake of the other, not for the sake of me. It also is actually helpful to understand then that uh, this, this way of thinking allows me to hold lightly the agendas that I might come into the space with. I've learned over 20 plus years as a community worker uh, in varied contexts that actually the ability to hold my agenda lightly opens up possibilities and potentials that might not have other been, otherwise been there. And it's a commitment that I hold and it's a way I act. So I'm committed to being a curious counsellor, a CC if you will. Um, and that is to ask questions, to assume first that I don't know before assuming that I do know to actually act with a humility and a grace towards people, but to actually be uh, indefatigable, that's the word for the morning, to those things and the issues that matter to my community, to actually fight hard and to stand up. That humility actually allows me and will allow all of us to make decisions uh, that are on behalf of our community and the best for the community at large, for the best betterment of the many. And so my commitment is, is that as a council, we are a service organisation. We fundamentally exist to serve people. We serve this community. And that is in a whole range of different spaces. And my commitment would be in, our, in my Division 3 area, things like how do we continue to ensure our waterways and our natural spaces are well cared for, our drainage and our parks and our gardens, our waste services, our museums and libraries. Council does all of these things. It also exists to plan and to strategise and to consider the future. It also actually seeks to bring investment into the region. It actually seeks to ensure that our communities are connected and healthy and whole and welcoming and that there's opportunities for many. Our council is a diverse and large organisation and I'm committed to trying to support all of that in a myriad of different ways. I'm also committed to actually just being the most present councillor I can be for the people of Division 3. Our community groups, our chambers of commerce, our residents, just in individuals. But I just am actually looking deeply forward to the challenge and the fun that we'll have. I will be playful because it helps me do my work well, but I will be committed and dedicated and I'm not afraid to stand on decisions that may not be popular for the sake of the many. So thank you heaps. I'm really looking forward to having a play and maybe even just bringing better shower pressure to the Karamundi Beach showers. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Burns. Councillor Natoli, I now invite you to address the meeting. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and good morning everyone to Madam CEO, ELT, and the guests uh, within the gallery. I want to commence by congratulating the Mayor and councillors who have been elected for this term of office. The decision to run and place yourself before the community is something you should be applauded for. And this goes for all candidates who put themselves forward. With the Sunshine Coast population of 350,000 people, only six people put their hand up to run for Mayor, 
and 33 candidates contested 10 divisions. It is a very difficult job to meet the expectations of our community in a very fast growing region with what has been limited support from state and federal governments to help manage the growth. As councillors, it's our obligation to immerse ourselves in detail about many complex issues which we, we deal with on a daily basis. Unfortunately, social media and a 24-hour news cycle make this even more difficult. So one might ask, why do we subject ourselves to this? For me, it comes within me, a deep-seated commitment to serve others, to serve my community, the residents of Division 4, and to serve it at the best of my ability. I believe the good aspects of the role far outweigh the negative. We are in a very privileged position to help shape our future and our contributions can leave lasting legacies. Unfortunately, the community has for the fifth time put their trust in me and elected me to serve them. I have served in two different councils, Maroochee Shire Council and now the Sunshine Coast Regional Council, spanning over a 27-year period. I was given the opportunity to lead the Maroochee Shire Council as the last serving mayor before the forced amalgamation. I mentioned legacy projects. Two projects which come to mind were delivered in my term as mayor. The first was the Maroochee Boulevard, where the original intention was to stage that road in three parts, two lanes, four lanes, and eventually six lanes over a 14 year period. As councillors, we challenged the organisation to deliver the six lanes up front, which delivered a $6 million saving in real terms and two major construction phases which would have severely disrupted traffic movement. And I want to acknowledge Judy Bailey, who was given the job to, to bring that project. She did it at a time when construction costs were through the roof and she brought it in on budget and on time, and an, an amazing job that you did, Judy, so thank you. The second project was the resumption of 50 hectares of land from the Morton Mill, which was very controversial at the time. And with the time and only months before the mill decided to close was a stroke of luck. The purchase price was 1.2 million, and we delivered the Fisherman's Road Sports Complex, which was, and could still be, the best AFL and netball complex in regional Queensland. As a councillor in my first two terms, I was given the opportunity to deliver a legacy project as chairman of the Murchie Bushland Botanic Gardens for seven years, developing the master plan and creating what today is an outstanding asset for our community, still supported by more than 100 volunteers 20 years after the Friends of the Bushland Botanic Gardens were formed. I strongly believe council should be the enabler, nurturing our community and harnessing the knowledge and the energy within. I want to pay tribute to one person who, even though there are many, so many people who have, I've admired during my terms as a councillor, I met Peter Wise in, as an 11 year old boy unloading the massive watermelons from the back of his truck at my father's fruit shop at Calandra. He was a man who was deeply rooted to the land, and I saw this man stand up and fight for what he believed in. His fights were legendary and all centred around his land, which was severed by Mains Road for the motorway, by council to create Northern, North Budget Boulevard. He fought Energex, Unity Water, his neighbour over the pool. He was the best bush lawyer I've ever seen, and his sense of right over injustices was what I admired so much about him. He was controversial at times. He stood for what he believed in, but putting all that aside, he was a kind, and caring person who always thought about what was best for our community. Peter recently passed away. And he'll be sadly missed. I know that I know he would be proud of me for standing up for what I believe in, and I want to pay tribute to him today. Finally, I served under the first and only female mayor of a 100-year history of the Murchie Shire Council from 2000 to 2004. And 20 years later, I will serve under the first ever female mayor of the Sunshine Coast Regional Council. I am and will be the only sitting council to have done that. I want to thank my wife, Rosanna, for all of her support for me over my 15 years in local government and I want to say how extremely proud of, I am of you becoming the Mayor of the Sunshine Coast. 
I also want to thank my three children, Ruby, Mia and Roman, for the support they have given over the last election campaign, but also as their father. They've always been there for me and I know they've been there for Rosanna. I want them to know how very proud I am of them. To the many family friends, uh, family members, friends, volunteers and supporters, my heartfelt appreciation and thanks for all you did to assist me during the election campaign. To my mother who passed away during the last term and my father who is 92 and has dementia. I know how proud they were every time I was elected to council and I know that they would be just the same today. I look forward to working with my colleagues, council management and our staff over the next four years to deliver a much better Sunshine Coast for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Natoli. I'd now like to invite Councillor Johnston, OAM, to take the floor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> um, Madam Mayor, CEO, fellow councillors, ELT, and members of the public who have come along today uh, to witness this uh, event. I uh, welcome you and thank you for attending. My mum and dad immigrated to Australia in 1948 with my older sister from a strife-torn Northern Ireland. And <clears throat> I'm fortunate to say that they never brought any of the uh, hatred or bigotry that uh, they left. And dad came to Australia predominantly. Mum, mum came with him because he was coming. And um, consequently, he came to Australia because he wanted a new life. He wanted a better life for himself and for his family and for the friends that he makes, that he made in the new country, which is what he did. I'm proud to say that my dad worked extremely hard. He was a very intelligent man, but because of my mother's health or his wife's health, um, it wasn't possible for him to enter into any great... Uh, enterprises, uh, so he w worked in the dairy industry and um, subsequently uh, the forestry as well. Um, he used to do gardening on weekends and he worked for both the main roads and the uh, Landsbyshire Council as a labourer. He was involved in the construction of uh, various dams and water supplies on the Sunshine Coast and uh, he was a rather talented stonemason, so there was plenty of work with stone pitching and all those sorts of things. But uh, mum and dad instilled in me a strong belief in conducting yourself ethically, responsibly and honestly. And uh, that's something that's lived with me all my life, I'm proud to say. All of my adult years, I have served the community uh, in various capacities, whether it was in the insurance industry, uh, whether it was in the local government, um, or the Hosp Sunshine Coast Hospital Board, the University Planning Committee, and Broom Pocket Dam construction, etc., etc. As well, uh, I have served my local community. Uh, I've served many years as president of the Laney Show Society. I've only just relinquished my fourth stint. Um, I usually do three years at a time. Fourth stint as show president. And during that time, um, we've seen a lot happen. One of the things that I'm really proud of in my service, three terms of service with Landsborough and Cloundra, Landsborough Shire and Cloundra City Council, was uh, thinking ahead and having the vision to... Um, obtain Commonwealth uh, funding for curb and channelling and drainage in the townships of Landsborough and Mullaney. Those two towns had less than about, a, about two or three hundred metres of curb and channel in the whole town. And at the end of my term, they were almost, if not totally, almost uh, completely um, curb and channelled, drains, drainage put in uh, and streets bitumen widened and in some cases new streets constructed. And it was things like that 
that really has given me the impetus to want to continue to serve my community. Um, I want the community that I serve to be a better place for my having served it. We can't, as somebody else has said, we can't um, always do what everybody wants. There's just not enough, enough money to do it. But I have made uh, significant commitments to my community uh, in the areas of um, building uh, community, improving my community, looking after the environment, etc., etc. And uh, I'm pleased, in fact, I'm quite thrilled to be re-elected for a second term on this council. Uh, this council is a huge business. It's very diverse. Uh, we're expected to do a lot of things today that in the 80s and 90s we didn't even dream of because in those days it was just about putting in infrastructure, putting in a new town plan or a town plan, full stop, etc., uh, etc. Et today we find that we have... We're, the community expectations are that we do a lot more than that. And I'm mindful of the fact that growing up, Nambour was the centre of, the, sun, of the, the entire Sunshine Coast, whether it was Noosa, Maroochee or Caloundra councils. Nambour was the centre. That was where you went to do your banking, that was where you went to see your solicitor and to go to the government departments um, and, you know, basically major the shops, the major shops were there too. Um, in those days, the people in the hinterland supported the fishing villages along the coast, which are now the major part of the city, to receive basic facilities. Um, for instance, in Lansfordshire, uh, Mullaney was actually larger than Caloundra back in the, in the 50s and 60s. Mullaney got the first water supply, followed by Caloundra. Uh, but things have changed, and I'd just like the people on, in the coastal strip to realise that they have a duty to ensure that the hinterland is looked after. Um, and that in the past, probably before most of them came here, the hinterland people actually looked after the coast and helped build it. So. You know, that's one of the, the messages that I'd like to, uh, to give. I was born and raised uh, in Division 5, and I've lived all but five years of my life in Division 5. You're telling me I've got to sit down? Oh, no, sorry. Um, Division 5 has a, a strong tourism, agricultural base, strong businesses, wedding industry, and it's really... I reckon, the jewel um, of the hinterland. Others will disagree with me. Um, I'm lucky to have both Mary Cancos Scenic Reserve and also Maroochee Bushland Botanic Gardens in my division. I represent seven towns and 26 districts. It's not an easy division to represent, but I'm not complaining. What I am saying is that um, there are seven towns that all have similar needs, wants, but often they have different solutions. And that's trying to get that message across to council officers is one of the tasks that I have. I'm lucky I've had some incredible mentors in my life, uh, people who have encouraged me, etc. But now, as I, you know, I said I've worked all my life, all my adult life, in the early stages I was a mover and shaker and I made things happen. But what I would do to make things happen was I would get down and do the dirty work and get it, make it happen, right? And people followed and, and all the rest. These days, in my advanced dotage, uh, <laughs> um, I find that I can't do that anymore. So I've devoted my time 
to helping the community uh, by obtaining things for them and making things happen. Uh, in my portfolio, I'm of service excellence. I'm very fortunate to have uh, a man that I respect greatly, Councillor Dixon, working with me. And uh, together, we've, I believe, made some differences uh, to this council. But I gave a commitment to encourage council uh, to ensure service levels and services are adequate and receive adequate funding. And I'll be very outspoken about that. I wish to thank my family, my friends, and all those who have supported me and have always supported me. The last election campaign was the toughest election campaign for me uh, in that I had two very strong candidates running against me uh, and I, have, um, I had a number of fairly difficult issues that were lapped, lopped, lobbed into onto my plate uh, in the run up to the election. And uh, unfortunately, some people are not happy if you don't tell them what you're going to do, but sometimes when you're an existing councillor, you have legal reasons why you can't say what you're going to do. Because if you do, then you can't have any involvement in relation to the issue whatsoever. So all I want to do is say, particularly to my wife and family and to those people who have been incredibly supportive of me, thank you very much. I will always cherish uh, your involvement in my life and thank you for your continual support. Uh, I wish this council every success and I will do whatever I can to try and make it successful. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. Councillor Dixon, would you please address the meeting? Well, good morning, everybody. And um, firstly, congratulations to everybody here and uh, more specifically our uh, new mayor, Mayor Natoli. Um, very excited about what the future will offer us here on the coast. There was an old farmer in Blyblay who gave me some advice back when I was first elected to council at 19. This is back in October 2006. And that man was Errol Middlebrook. He was a farmer from Blyblay. <clears throat> he was also a councillor. And he said, listen here, young men, you listen to these words very closely. You, you take these on board. When you take up this job, you're going to be making decisions that are going to impact people's lives. Every day you turn up to work, you're going to make a decision and you can help people or you can hurt people. And you make sure you do everything you can to help those people out and you never forget that. And I've never forgot those words that he told me because as individuals, we make decisions every day about the people we choose to help and those decisions on the floor of council that impact a lot of people's lives. And it's always been my view that you get out of bed to help people, even if it's one person for the day, change their life for the better. And after 18 years, I've never forgotten that. In fact, that's what drives me to still be here, nothing else. We all have our own motivations for wanting to be councillor. A lot of us in this room, if not all of us, want to make the Sunshine Coast a better place. I truly believe that, especially what I've heard here this morning. Very impressive. We have people in our organisation, and there's a lot of council staff. Now, I'm going to single a few out. There's people I've worked with over the years, such as Amanda Wiggs, Chris Griffiths, Thomas Sullivan, Kerry White, Nick Coluccio, Stephen George, Bernard Keyes, Ryan Butler, Kate McKenzie, and the list goes on. I could list hundreds of council staff I've worked with, and I've never achieved anything on my own. I've never achieved anything on my own. Everything I've achieved, I've achieved because I've worked with the council staff and the local residents. I've never achieved anything on my own. It's always been a team effort. There was an ex-councillor, uh, Tim Dwyer, also deputy mayor. And I hear what people say. His words were, the standard you walk past is the standard that you accept. He said, Christian, never forget, if you walk past an issue, you walk past a situation, 
you walk past something that doesn't sit right with you, call it out. Get in there, roll your sleeves up and fix it because no one else is going to get in there and save it. You have to be the person that shows leadership and you need to be the change you want to see. Never sit back and expect other people to do it for you. If you see something, get it fixed. And I've always remembered Tim's advice as well. It was good advice. And that's why every day that I'm out, if I see something, I pull over. I call the council, I put the CRM in. If it's graffiti, if it's potholes, trees, whatever it is, if I see it, I don't care whose area it is in, it's my responsibility because I have an ability to change that part of the world. And I believe if we all took Tim's advice, the Sunshine Coast would be a much better place. Regarding the region, I see a lot of issues. We've got continued population growth. We've all seen the changes. I've been here since I was four years old when I moved to Montville on, on about uh, 30 acres on farmland, and I've seen the Sunshine Coast change. Um, a lot of good things, some bad things as well. We need to protect our identity and our difference. We keep saying we don't want to be like the Gold Coast. We don't want to be like Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne. Well, the advice I heard recently was, well, we need to start to realise what we want to be and we need to work with the state and federal government and identify that because we have every opportunity right now as a team to protect that. And I love where we live. Every day I wake up and I ask myself, do I want to be on the Sunshine Coast? And when I drove in this morning, I asked myself that question again. And yeah, I do want to live here. I want to raise my family here. But we've got a lot of work to do and when I'm at a meeting like this and hear all the positive things my colleagues are saying, it makes me want to live here even more because I'm optimistic and I see the positives for the future. I also see that our communities want to feel safe. At the moment, a lot of members in our community don't feel safe. They're starting to not feel safe. We have a significant lack of infrastructure, not just from council, but state and federal governments. For many years, we've been completely ignored and the infrastructure hasn't been delivered. We've also got homelessness and people doing it tough. Now, for the first time, I'm starting to see tents and people living in cars in Division 6, which I've seen in um, other places like Nambour and Rochidor. It's, it's creeping into Division 6 now, and I'm very aware of the, the problem. Not all of these issues can be fixed by council. I get it. In fact, these are responsibilities for every um, level of government. In fact, we can't ignore them. We need to work with our state and federal counterparts because, again, we only achieve things if we work together, and that's the teamwork. The coast I grew up in is changing. You know, it's changed since I moved from Montville to Budrum to Sippy Downs to Palmview. But I don't think we can give up yet. I think we're at a crucial time right now where we can save the Sunshine Coast and we can preserve everything that we've come to love, or we can destroy the Sunshine Coast and, and, and let things like casinos and... Uh, those type of things that we don't want in the region happen. We need to stand up and be counted. In fact, it's more important to stand up today than it was yesterday because we've got the opportunity to save the place. The planning scheme, it's going to be a big one for us. We all know that the planning scheme is, in fact, probably the most vital document because it tells everyone what we stand for. From our open space, our development on beaches, um, eating away at the green space in the hinterland, these are all decisions that we will make and we will, we will, we're going to shape the future. It's like Errol said, we're going to make decisions that are going to change people's lives. In my part of the world, we've got the Sunshine Coast Motorway, the Mooloola River Interchange, which has been forgotten and forgotten and forgotten. It doesn't matter if you're in the Labor Party, the Liberal Party, it doesn't matter. They've all failed us. The project is not getting done. In fact, the money has been taken away again. People's homes were resumed. There is now people out of homes moved elsewhere. Don't know where they are. They've moved on. Their houses were bulldozed because we were going to build a road. The state government were going to build it. Federal government were going to build it. It's not happening. Most people have been displaced. We need a 24-7 police station at Sippy Downs. We all know youth crime is on the rise and we need a 24-7 police station. We need a fire station as well to cater for Budrum, Sippy Downs and Palmview. I don't forget those things and they're things people tell me. Youth crime is on the rise. We look in the newspaper and we watch TV and people say that they are feeling unsafe. We need a focus on QPS resources on the ground to, to help in our communities. And I'm going to say something right now that, that is not popular, but I, I feel as I get older that it, it is easier to stand up for what you believe in and say what needs to be said. 
there is a lack of social housing. There is a lack of police resources. There are people sleeping in our parks under benches and tents. Yet, we're doing the 2032 Olympic Games, spending billions of dollars on the Olympic Games. In fact, this council will spend millions of dollars on Olympic resources, all for sporting events. And I get the positives, but have we really got our priorities right when we've got people sleeping in our parks, yet we can find billions of dollars for the Olympic Games? It just doesn't sit right with me, and something needs to change. If nothing changes, nothing changes. And I think the state government and all councils should review the Olympics. Someone else can do it. I'm sure it can go somewhere else. Those people on the floor sleeping on the ground need us right now. In Division 6, we've achieved some great projects. Let's not forget the positives. There's been many things done, from pedestrian crossings, street lighting, new roads, footpaths and street trees. In fact, on the way here, I saw... Uh, council staff and contractors planting trees on Claymore Road at Sippy Downs. Fantastic. Out this morning, planting trees, one of our goals. And in fact, I want to see a lot more street trees in our region. But for this term, I've got some pretty big things to deliver. To deliver. For 18 years, I've been working on the Sippy Downs Community Library and Facility. It is now Council's number one library project in the region. We're really serious about that, and it is my number one priority for this term. I also want to work with Councillor Ted Hungerford on local roads around Budrum South and Sippy Downs. In fact, Ted and I have been working on about four or five new roads for the region to help alleviate traffic pressures. I want to see the Harmony Village Green developments at Palmview be delivered and I want to see the infrastructure delivered with that. And the list goes on. I'd like to quickly thank people in Division 6. Although I was the only councillor to not go through a formal election, this is a big deal because the people are expecting me to get on and prove my worth. I need to get on with the agenda I had, deliver on my promises, and I've got to work just about as hard as everyone in this room, if not harder, to prove that I still should be here in this role. Madam Mayor, nothing is achieved without teamwork. This council has the collective opportunity to deliver and focus on the things that matter to people. This could be the best council the Sunshine Coast has ever seen. And I truly believe that. Let's focus on the challenges and opportunities before us. Together, we can change people's lives and make the place we call home much better for the future. May God bless you all and your term ahead. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Councillor Hungerford, would you please make your presentation? I would like to thank the residents of Division 7 for electing me for an unprecedented sixth term. That faith in me to go forward on your behalf, I do not take lightly. Also achieving topping the poll, the highest vote of any candidate. I'm humbled by that and I will not take it for granted. I work diligently every day to deliver the very best I can for you. To my small group of loyal friends. See, I'm not supported by any political organisation. I run my own campaign. I do not accept donations, so there are no compromises and no favours owed. The only people I owe anything to are the residents of Division 7 who elected me. So my campaign's a small grassroots campaign, and I really appreciate that small group of law friends who turn up election after election to support me. Some of them travel distance now. Burp and Gary Woodford. One's even a mayor in Tasmania now and he came up to hand out for me on election day. I'm very blessed to have such good friends. But most importantly, I don't want to get emotional. My beautiful wife, Julie. She stands next to me the whole way. Helps me with the social media, the signage, free polling, election day. Even when I'm out letterbox dropping till 10, 11 o'clock at night, I go home, there's a lovely dinner and a cold beer waiting for me. What more could a guy want? 
Julie, thank you for what you do for me, and I love you, dear. Now, anyone that doesn't know, finance and sound financial management is my passion. Council is ordered by the, forensically audited by the Queensland Audit Office annually. All local governments in Queensland are. And if you see that the report's tabled in, in par Parliament annually by the Queensland Audit Office, over one third of councils in Queensland are not financially sustainable. Fortunately, we're not in that boat. We have received 15 unmodified audits in a row. Clean bit of health from a full forensic from the Queensland Audit Office annually. Queensland Treasury also has us in a strong and neutral outlook, the highest that can be given to any local government. We're one of only four of 77 in Queensland to have that. I want to see us stay there. And that has been reaffirmed again just recently for the 23-24 year. So this next budget will be crucial in maintaining that. We need to contain spending in a high inflation environment, high cost of delivering services. What's that, 8 to 12% I think is running out at the moment. We're doing those things each year. And the high cost of construction for delivering new things. That's about 8, 9% on the construction index. CPI is only 4.1 at the moment. And when I do the grocery shopping each week, I'm not quite sure I believe that figure. But it's constant. Everything's constantly going up. But the, the, the cost of not maintaining your sound finances is ultimately borne by our residents, the ratepayers. And they are already struggling with the high cost of living. And like Christian's already going to, people actually haven't got housing. They're sleeping on the streets and that. So with the electricity, mortgage, high mortgages, groceries going, fuel and everything, our community is under the pump. So it's incumbent on us to maintain that sound financial management. I congratulate my fellow councillors on those being re-elected and the new councillors as well. I look forward to working with you to maintain the previous council sound financial management. And there's one quote I'm going to use here. A sound future is not something that just happens. We make it happen. So let's work together collaboratively, responsibly, and let's continue to deliver that sound outcome for our community because they've elected us to do that and they deserve nothing less. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hungerford. Councillor Bunag. I now invite you to address the meeting. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And given that this is my first time speaking in this place, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Cubby Cubby people, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We are incredibly fortunate to live in a country where we are able to learn from the oldest continuing culture in the world. And as First Nations Australians, I put this commitment to you I commit myself to learning and listening to you over the next four years. I'd also like to begin by acknowledging and congratulating my colleagues on their re-election and election to this place. In particular, my newly elected colleagues, Mayor Natoli, Councillor Broderick and Councillor Burns. I look forward to working closely with each of you as a strong, united team of councillors fighting for the interests of the Sunshine Coast. Madam Mayor, I ran for council because I'm passionate about making sure that we protect the future of the Sunshine Coast for future generations, our lifestyle. But to understand where that motivation comes from, I believe it's important that I share some of my background because I'm proud to say, much like Councillor Johnson, my story is a bit of a Sunshine Coast story. I was born in Budrum, just up the road and grew up in Centenary Heights Road in Coolum, where I lived with my mum, Cheska, my dad, Tim, and my sister, Talia. Some of my fondest memories of my childhood revolve around visiting my dad at the Coolum Hyatt, where he worked as a greenskeeper, 
and driving around the course in golf buddies and gators to visit, village, to visit the village square. I reflect, Dad, on our many days we spent together at our favourite surfing spots and the endless, endless car park conversations we had with many fellow surfers and locals. Madam Mayor, please don't take this the wrong way, but it's often joked in our household that my dad is the unofficial mayor of our Sunshine Coast surfing communities. And I attribute this to his ability to listen and talk to anybody. I also remember the excitement that I had as a child visiting my mum at her work in the many pathology laboratories that she worked across the Sunshine Coast where she was the manager. I recognise the importance of her work, particularly during COVID, her leadership and how healthcare is such an important industry for the future of the Sunshine Coast. In my mum, there is someone who has an unparalleled ability to get things done, whether it be on a polling booth or whether it be in any walk of life that she chooses. I hope that some of those qualities have been passed on to me. Thank you very much, Mum and Dad. For me, family has been the grounding for my values, and from that I have always had a very strong sense of right and wrong, and sought to fight against inequality and unfairness. That was what motivated me to become a lawyer in the first place. And I hope that my work in my previous career, representing catastrophically injured healthcare patients, and more recently, everyday working people, has left those people in a better place. Which brings me to my hopes and aspirations for the next four years ahead. As some of you will know, I am lucky to live in beautiful Yurumba with my wife, Gabby, and our little girl, Penny, who is particularly fond of rhyme time at the Coolum Library. I believe my responsibility for the Sunshine Coast and then over the next four years is to make decisions that give future generations like Penny that are growing up here the best opportunity they have to enjoy the same opportunities that I did as a kid. But also to try and leave the Sunshine Coast in a better place than we found it. And when I speak about the opportunities that I had growing up here as a kid, principally it was about a connectedness to our environment. It was about an outdoor lifestyle and it was about a real sense of community cohesion and belonging. I believe that people in Division 8 want a council that makes decisions which help protect and reflect the character of our communities. And while I respect and I acknowledge that nothing stays the same, the way in which we grow and change over the next four years and beyond I believe should be reflective of those community expectations. However, to me, leaving the Sunshine Coast in a better way than we found it means that we must continue to show ongoing interest and leadership in creating opportunities for people to work in a diversified set of industries, which I know this council will do lots of work in. I want people to not only want to stay on the Sunshine Coast, but also be able to afford to stay on the Sunshine Coast. I understand that this is a multi-layered issue, but a natural starting point is working towards creating a range of diversified industries, delivering well-paid and secure jobs with a mixture of housing options. In closing, Madam Mayor, a saying that I've always kept in the back of my mind is that victory has a hundred fathers, defeat is an orphan. From my experience, that is particularly applicable when it comes to elections. I would not be here if it wasn't for the support and trust that people in Division 8 have placed in me. And throughout the campaign, I was very lucky to have so much support and so much gratitude that I can give to people in the division as I was door knocking, providing me with things like glasses of water, encouragement when it got tough. Ultimately, it was people who put their faith in me that have put me in this place today. I'd also like to thank some particular friends who made a lot of contributions in terms of effort during the campaign. Julia, Naomi, Joe, Sarah, Norm, Teddy, Peter, Alison, Rod, Keegan, Nick and Bill. 
Your contributions got me over the line. I cannot thank you anymore. And most importantly, I'd like to close by thanking my family. Gabby, Penny, Mum, Dad, Talia, Kat, Rio, and my grandparents who aren't here, for their sacrifices that they have made to support me through this campaign and for this role as a counsellor into the future. I won't let you down. Thank you, Councillor Bunag. I now invite Councillor Suarez to take the floor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I too would like to uh, congratulate everyone who was elected to the 2024 uh, council, uh, returning councillors and new councillors, including uh, Councillor Burns, who's no doubt going to keep the term interesting. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank the community of Division 9 for showing support for my re-election as councillor. Um, it was lovely, actually, to be on the booths and be able to chat to so many residents who have thanked me for helping them in, in really small little ways, um, in ways that I've actually forgotten about. Um, and it was a real good reminder and reaffirmation for the reason for why I stood for re-election. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge all of the candidates in all of the divisions and the mayoral race who put themselves forward uh, for consideration. It's not an easy thing to do, and it allowed the community to make a democratic choice. I'd also like to thank my family, including my newly found family, uh, my friends and mentors who volunteered in various ways. A few people have talked about their mum. My mum's a feisty Croatian, and it was best to not let her come out onto the campaign. <laughs> But what she did do was she baked endless batches of cookies which kept us fed. And if you are of European descent, you know food is life. Um, the campaign would have been a lot more difficult without that help, and I wouldn't be ha here without it. Um, an observation sent to me from someone who came through the booth was actually how lovely my volunteers were and, and that I had really good and diverse people supporting me. So that was a really great inspiration. And while I've known many of the volunteers for a long time, I was actually humbled by those who volunteered because they observed, observed my experience um, through the last term. One of the benefits of this role is the vast number of people we meet and the friendships that form through it. I'm very much looking forward to the next four years, which is likely to have a number of challenges, but with that, some great opportunities as well. I look forward to continuing work on the projects that are of importance to the residents of Division 9, and I'll continue to do my best to represent them and work with the current council to collectively shape the future of our region for the betterment of our communities across all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Suarez. And finally, Councillor Law, would you please take to the floor? Thank you. Um, someone's got to go last, <laughs> and with Division 10, it often gets to be me. <laughs> Madam Mayor, councillors, CEO, executive team, and everyone who calls the Sunshine Coast home. I was born on Ngunnawal country to Scottish and Irish parents, and I pay my respects to the First Nations people of the Sunshine Coast and the care that they have showed this place for many thousands of years and the care that's now entrusted to us to continue that to the future. It is a privilege to stand here today on behalf of the people of Division 10 and the Sunshine Coast who have put their trust in me to represent them in the 2024 to 2028 Council. It's been quite a journey to get here and I thank my wife Karen, three adult children, who gave their commitment to the campaign to have me re-elected. Furthermore, I am humbled and incredibly grateful to the diverse team who emerged from our community to help get me re-elected for another four years. The environmentalists, the young people, the artists, musicians and creatives, the retirees, the social workers, the small businesses and the big ones, the families, the psychologists, and the many community organisations. I could not have done it without you. Your determination and contribution has enabled me to be here to represent you once more. 
This community-based grassroots campaign has succeeded. I look forward to working with you all for another four years, driving positive change for the hinterland and northern Blackall Range that is Division 10. We will continue to work together to improve and enhance our environment through bush care, through catchment care, tree planting and bush regeneration. We will reduce emissions, pollution and landfill. We will continue to work together to make sure that the hinterland gets its fair share and we all benefit from the strength of the Sunshine Coast economy. And no one is left behind. We will help each other and in particular those who have no one else to help them at all. And no one is left behind. We will continue to grow and develop the space and opportunities for the musicians, the creatives and the artists who are vital for us all. The arts brings communities together. And this is very true right now in Nambour. The arts will be a significant part of Nambour's future and the whole Sunshine Coast. We will work together with compassion and kindness for our community and no one will be left behind. I'm grateful for the opportunity to continue our quest for a better world. Thank you, Councillor Law. Councillors, can I please have someone move that the presentations this morning are noted for the minutes? Councillor Dixon moved. A seconder? Councillor Natoli seconded the motion. I'll now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. We now move to item 6.1, appointment of the Deputy Mayor. Councillors, we will take this report read, noting Mr Matheson is on hand should there be any questions. Can I have a mover? Councillor Johnston. Madam Mayor, uh, fellow councillors, it's my privilege to today move uh, a motion for the appointment of the Deputy Mayor. Um, for the councillors and the members of the public, uh, there is no prescribed statutory process for how Council selects their preferred nominee for Deputy Mayor. On this basis, Councillor Hungerford and Suarez self-nominated. I would like to outline that councillors chose to use a ballot to arrive at their preferred Council nominee for appointment as Deputy Mayor. The ballot was conducted by the CEO and scrutinised and scrutineered by councillors. It is my privilege to move a motion today on behalf of my fellow councillors. And the resolution is, or the motion is, that council resolves under section 175 in brackets two, in, sorry, open brackets, closed brackets, um, if the local gov of the Local Government Act 2009 to appoint councillor Maria Suarez as Deputy Mayor of the Sunshine Coast Regional Council. May I have a seconder? Councillor Dixon. Councillor Johnston, would you like to say anything further? I won't say very much other than to say uh, I believe that whichever candidate for the position of Deputy Mayor had have been elected, that they would have done so with honour um, and with uh, a great deal of understanding of what the responsibilities are. However, Councillor Suarez has been uh, the successful nominee and uh, she has demonstrated to her fellow councillors over the last term uh, and in the early parts of this term to be more than capable of doing the job and hence uh, she is our selected uh, or our elected candidate. Thank you. Wish her all the best. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Dixon, would you like to speak to the motion? No? Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Suarez. 
thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank the councillors for supporting me uh, to be elected as the Deputy Mayor. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge and recognise the vast experience and leadership of all the councillors in this room. Councillor Hungerford has many years of experience with council and I will continue to value and rely on his insights, particularly with finance and governance. Um, I also acknowledge that every single councillor here is more than capable of fulfilling the role of um, Deputy Mayor, but however, timing and personal circumstances may not have been in their favour. I put myself forward because I would like to see Mayor Natoli be successful because if Mayor Natoli is successful, we are all successful and our community will benefit. While it has been early days, Mayor Natoli, your leadership style has proven to be open and collaborative and I'm looking forward to supporting you and working closely with my fellow councillors for the benefit of the region. Thank you, Councillor Suarez. Councillor Hungerford. Through you, Madam May. I put myself forward because I saw it as a uh, duty with my 20 years of experience to put myself forward in that role. It's elected by the fellow councillors, I respect that. And uh, Councillor Suarez has my full support in her endeavours and doing the role and I will assist wherever I can because it's a team environment here and I respect that. Thank you, Councillor Hungerford. Anyone else who'd like to speak? Councillor Johnston, would you like to close the debate? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to congratulate and thank Councillor Hungerford uh, for his very humble uh, support of uh, Maria. And uh, I'd like to point out something I forgot to point out is that not only for the first time does the Sunshine Coast Regional Council have a, a lady uh, mayor, uh, but we also have, for the first time, a lady deputy mayor, and uh, that's quite an achievement. So uh, congratulations and uh, thank you to all of the councillors who uh, put so much time and so much effort into making sure that um, we had a candidate for deputy mayor who was acceptable. Um, and as it was, we had two candidates and either one would have been so. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. I'll now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? The motion has been carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Now moving on to item 6.2. We'll also take this item as read, noting Ms Friend is here, should there be any questions. Can I have a mover? Councillor Broderick. Oh. I'd like to move that council receive and note the report titled post-election meeting matters and approve the first ordinary meeting of the 2024 to 2028 Sunshine Coast Regional Council be held at 9am on Wednesday, 24th of April 2024, with subsequent ordinary meetings to be held at least once in each month thereafter and to approve under Section 10 of the Disaster Management Regulation 2014 the appointment of Mayor Rosanna Natoli as a member and chair and Councillor Maria Suarez as member and deputy chair of the Sunshine Coast Local Disaster Management Group. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Hungerford. Councillor Broderick, would you like to speak to the motion? Councillor Hungerford, would you like to speak to the motion? Would any other councillors like to speak to the motion? Councillor Broderick, would you like to close the debate? Okay. Thank you, councillors. I'll now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? The motion has been Thank you, councillors. Councillors, that concludes the agenda for today's post-election meeting. Thank you all. I now declare the meeting closed at 10.30. Thank you.